Well, hello, it's the Boxing Librarian now. I thought on this matchup I was going to match Jamel Charlo. People are uh, really hyping Jamel Charlo. Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo. Oops, sorry. Um, and I thought I'll match him against a middleweight, but matching him with a Hall of Fame middleweight or a great middleweight seemed a bit pointless. So what I thought I'd do to make the match more even <laughs> is match him to a current middleweight stroke, super middleweight, Danny Jacobs. So let's take a look. Now, Jamal Charlo, okay, he's beaten two champions, okay, Danny Jacobs um, beats him so far, um, having beaten four champions. Now, fights against champions is a bigger margin for Danny Jacobs. Uh, Jamal Charlo has um, had two fights against champions, um, Danny Jacobs has had eight. Uh, wins against champions is a similar story, it's all Danny Jacobs' way. Well. Uh, Jamal Charlo has scored two wins over champions, um, being unbeaten, of course. Danny Jacobs has scored five wins over champions. So all three champion stats are to Danny Jacobs um, fairly easily. Now the Hall of Fame stats for both these guys, they are both active, so I didn't expect anything. Um, we'll have to wait a number of years, okay, before we see if any of the guys they fight, probably less in Charlo's case, uh, join the Hall of Fame, whereas Jacobs may get Golovkin, uh, Canelo, etc. But all those stats are drawn. Zero zeros on Hall of Fame fights, zero zeros on Hall of Fame is beaten, um, and zero zeros in wins over Hall of Famers. So it's fair to say uh, that neither fighter has done anything on there, but the slide pretty much goes to Danny Jacobs. He's won the first three starts rather clearly. And this kind of... This matchup will show what would happen because I'm matching Jamal Charlo to a fighter who's not an all-time great or has a great middleweight resume um, per se matched against the other great middleweights in Danny Jacobs. Um, but this matchup is quite stark um, and will highlight one thing by the end. So let us leave that, okay, let us go on to title fight stats now, uh, Jamal Charlo has had six world title fights, okay, Danny Jacobs comes in with nine, um, but in title fight wins, Jamal Charlo manages to get the draw, okay, um, he's won six world title fights, Danny Jacobs also has won six, now in title defences, Jamal Charlo has a slight edge, he's made five title defences so far, Danny Jacobs has made four. And in world titles won, okay, um, they've both been two-time champions, Charlo at light middle and middle, Jacobs two-time middleweight, so both of them have won two world titles. Now, neither Jamal Charlo or Danny Jacobs has been a lineal champion, so that's zeros, and neither one has been undisputed, so that is zeros. And in terms of how many weights they've been a champion in, um, Jamal Charlo edges this one, he's been a champion at two weights, Danny Jacobs has been a champion at one weight. Uh, we'll see if Jacobs can get a shot at super middleweight or back down at middle it uh, wherever he's going to be fighting um, in future so on this slide okay we could say you know yeah Jamal Charlo has done a bit of a fight back okay he's uh, made more title defenses by one he's been a champion in more weights um, you know Danny Jacobs has had more overall title fights but has lost some so that slide is more of a mixed bag, okay, more of a mixed bag, and it's one of the few mixed bag slides um, we actually get on this entire matchup. So let us leave the title fight stats um, right there, okay, let us now jump on to the unified title fight stats. Now, neither guy does fantastic on this, uh, not surprisingly. Uh, Jamal Charlo has never had a unified title fight, okay, despite being a pro over a decade. Um, Danny Jacobs has two, okay, so at least he's had two. One against Canelo, one against um, Triple G Golovkin, of course. Uh, unified title fight wins. Neither fighter has won a unified title fight, so that's zeros. Um, and neither fighter um, has made a unified title defense, so again, that's zeros. So basically, uh, neither fighter's done very well on this slide but Danny Jacobs at least has had some unification fights at least he's um, you know been in scenarios where he could have potentially been a unified champion Jamal Charlo is drifting along fighting god knows who at the moment so there is the unified title fight starts not much really to babble on about there or get excited about there so let's go on to how they have been rated now, Jamal Charlo, okay, has been top 10 rated for a total of six years. Now, interestingly, Danny Jacobs has also um, been top 10 rated for six years, so that's dead heat there. But when we look at how they were top three rated, okay, Jamal Charlo has only been top three rated um, for one year, okay. Danny Jacobs has been top three rated for five years. Um, so Danny Jacobs has been a way more consistent top three rated fighter at middleweight um, than Charlo has in the divisions he's fought in. And as a ring champion, neither fighter has been a ring champion. So that is 0-0. Zero, zero. 
So again, a mixed bag, two draws. Jacob's just um, winning in overall being a top three rated fighter. But this slide in the unified title fight slide, really, um, it's kind of nip and tuck. Jacob's had those two unified title fights. The others were zeros. Uh, and it's a similar story here. You know, this is not like Pacquiao and Mayweather have just done. These guys are not on that level. So their numbers are not as impressive. So let's go on to rated opponents. Now, basically, this kind of shows a big difference, okay? Jamal Charlo, under the system I used, has had three fights against top 10 rated fighters. Danny Jacobs has more than trebled that at 10. Wins against top three rated fighters. Danny Jacobs more than doubles Jamal Charlo's total of three, coming in at seven. Fights against top three rated fighters, okay? Jamal Charlo has had one. Danny Jacobs, again, wins that one, coming in with three. And wins against top three rated fighters. Jamal Charlo is unbeaten, okay? So that fight against top three rated fighter is a win. Danny Jacobs has won one, of course, and then, you know, failed to beat um, Canelo and Golovkin. So that start is a draw. Now, fights against ring champions. Danny Jacobs has fought a ring champion, okay? Jamal Charlo never has. But neither fighter has had a win over a ring champion. So basically, guys, okay, this stat slide uh, again, you know, it, this matchup kind of shows Jamal Charlo for what he is, is, you know, an average fighter when you compare him. Is average or below average when you compare him to, you know, even fighters like Danny Jacobs, um, you know, so matching Jamal Charlo, if I chucked a Hall of Fame middleweight on here like Monzon, Hagler, you know, uh, Tony Zale, Freddie Steele, I mean, you know, the entire match, it would be an absolute embarrassment, okay, and not in favour of Jamal Charlo. So let's leave that slide, okay, let's go on to knockouts now. Jamal Charlo um, has got 22 knockouts in his career, okay, Danny Jacobs has scored 29. So advantage Jacobs in overall knockouts. Basically KOs in three rounds, though, Jacobs has a bigger advantage. Uh, Jamal Charlo has scored 10 knockouts in three rounds or less. Danny Jacobs has scored a massive 21, so more than double Charlo's tally there. And KOs in one round, okay, um, Jamal Charlo has scored one KO in one round. Danny Jacobs has scored 14 first round wins. So that's a good tally there for Danny Jacobs, um, you know, and also uh, I remember when he bombed out uh, Peter Quillen uh, in one round. That was a devastating display. So he's also pretty much, to me, scored better quality of first round wins as well. Um, when you look at Charlo's resume, it's not hard to figure that one. So KOs against champions. Okay, Jamal Charlo has scored one knockout or stoppage over a champion. Danny Jacobs has scored four. So advantage Jacobs again. And KOs against Hall of Famers from first slide. Neither has fought a Hall of Famer, so they have zero KOs over Hall of Famers. And KOs in title fights. Okay, it's narrow advantage Danny Jacobs at the moment. Uh, Jamal Charlo has scored four KOs in title fights. Danny Jacobs comes in um, with an overall total of five. So this slide is definitely edged to Danny Jacobs, um, you know, Jamal Charlo, um, like on the um, rated opponent slide, you know, Danny Jacobs is powering ahead now, uh, winning slide after slide and poor Jamal Charlo is not really, uh, not really offering up much resistance in the stat matchup. So let's go to the pound for pound slide, a very sad and depressing slide. As you can see, okay, neither of these guys is really, you know, lit the touch paper, so to speak, on this one. So, Jamal Charlo, pound for pound, top 10 rated, zero years in my all-time ratings, and I have created 120 years of all-time pound for pound ratings. Jamal Charlo has not yet figured in it. Neither has Danny Jacobs. Neither of these fighters have been pound for pound top three rated, and neither of them have been pound for pound number one rated, obviously, from never being top 10 rated. So, the first three stats are drawn. Individual pound for pound has beat. Neither fighter has beaten a fighter rated in my all-time pound for pound ratings. Uh, and fights against Pound Pounders. Danny Jacobs has had two fights against Pound Pounders, Canelo Golovkin. Um, so he edges that one. Wins against Pound Pounders, zero for both. Pound Pound number one wins, zero for both. And Pound Pound number one rated fighters individually beaten, also zeros. So that is a pretty dank and depressing slide. So I'm just going to leave it right there. Okay, and go on to the round slide. Now... Final slide before the result, okay? So in rounds against champions, Jamal Charlo has fought 15, yay. Danny Jacobs has more than quadrupled that at the moment, coming in with 61. Now, of course, some of these stats like that one will change going forward. Um, but it's definitely Charlo on the chase. Now, Jamal Charlo and Danny Jacobs have never fought any rounds against Hall of Fame opponents as yet. Um, and in title fight rounds, Jamal Charlo has fought 43 title fight rounds. That is compared to Danny Jacobs, 68. And in ring rating points, the system I created, to show 
uh, where they gained points for what position they were rated each year. They were rated. Jamal Charlo um, has scored 40 ring rating points. Okay, Danny Jacobs has come in so far with 61. Now, that ring rating points is obviously going to be a more tighter battle, okay, because Jamal Charlo, currently a middleweight champion, will be gaining points there every year. Danny Jacobs still is, um, but whether he can maintain that, that's another thing. So there is the end of the stat matchup. This hasn't been the greatest stat matchup in terms of great figures and closeness of huge amounts. Uh, but it does kind of show that Jamal Charlo, when people talk him up and hype him up, is not even doing as well on these stats as Danny Jacobs, who's not even talked and hyped up, if you understand where I'm coming from. So let's go to the result from 43 stats. It's a rather sad and sombre result for Jamal Charlo. From the 43 stats, 22 of them are drawn, so many of those can swing one way or another going forward. But in terms of stats won from the 43, Jamal Charlo wins Danny Jacobs on two stats. Uh, Danny Jacobs thrashes him, winning on 19 stats. Now, like I said, many of those stats in the draw category of 22 could swing one way or another going forward, okay? But I think it's fair to say that Jamal Charlo has to do a lot of work to build his statistics up in a statistical sense only. He's got to do a lot of work before he can even be compared to Danny Jacobs. So it kind of shows where he is um, in the cold light of day. He gets thrashed by a middleweight contender. I'm out.